We acknowledge that we are streaming to you today from the traditional lands of the Ghana and Nadjari peoples, and we respect their spiritual relationship with their country. We also acknowledge the Ghana people as the traditional custodians of the Adelaide region, the Nadjari people as the traditional custodians of the Mid-North region of South Australia, and we respect that their cultural and heritage beliefs are still as important to the living Ghana and Nadjari people today. We extend that respect to all First Nations people watching and sharing with us today. Hi, I'm Sam. My name's Jacob, and we are both moderators at MOD. What is MOD, you might say? Uh, MOD stands for Museum of Discovery, and we are a future-focused museum that explores art, science, and innovation. So what is TV? Maybe you visit us before, maybe you haven't. Mod TV is the latest venture for Mod, with live content streaming directly to your screens four days a week. That's from Tuesday until Friday. Today, we will be engaging with the themes of connection, well-being, and disruption, and looking deeper into our exhibits, hosting games, and more throughout the week. Our current online exhibition is at MOD is Life Interrupted, uh, where we're exploring well-being and connection in a disrupted world. Today, we want to focus on well-being, and to help us do that, we're pleased to welcome Grant Hall. Grant is a consultant, researcher, creative event manager, and educator focused on harnessing the transformative power of culture and the arts to solve our most pressing challenges. Through his business, League Cultural Diplomacy, Grant helps individuals and groups to drive transformational change using culture and arts-based initiatives. Grant is also an academic at the University of South Australia, lecturing in the Arts and Cultural Management Program. Hi, Grant. Welcome. Hi, guys. Hi, Jacob. Hi, Sam. Just a reminder to everyone watching at home, if you have any questions or comments, uh, put them up in the Twitch chat stream and uh, we'll try and work them into today's chat. So Grant, um, your work on transformational learning uh, experiences in tourism uh, is incredibly relevant to the theme of well-being that we're discussing today. Perhaps uh, you could give a little introduction to our viewers about what tra transformational learning experiences means to you and how your interest came about in the field. Well, transformative learning or transformational learning is a, well, to start with, it's an academic field uh, about a learning style. It's a style of learning where people experience profound change through perspective transformation. So their, their mindsets change about certain things and, and that can serve as the basis for, um, for behavioural change as well. Um, now, for me, the reason why I'm studying is that it is that I think, uh, you know, we can kind of see the state of the world at the moment and we know things that have to change. Uh, we know things have to change at a societal level. We know we need to bring about more innovation to help uh, things to change into a, a more positive direction. But I think that the study of transformative learning is important because I think change also has to be able to occur at an individual level as well. So that's where I'm coming from. And in this field of work, I know there's probably, there must be more challenges now in this time that we're in, um, but what are the kind of roadblocks and, and challenging aspects that you face when studying this field? I mean, I think like a lot of research is just the, the whole COVID-19 thing has uh, put a lot of research on hold. So for example, at the moment I was doing some research work at MOD about the way people interpret uh, the exhibitions and the installations there. And uh, I was lucky enough to be able to interview some of the moderators and also some of the uh, exhibitions team who designed the uh, Seven Siblings exhibition. Uh, and then the next stage was to go into the museum and follow people around, visitors around, as they worked their way through the ex exhibition. Uh, but unfortunately, it's closed, so that kind of... a uh, put that idea on, on hiatus, but, uh, you know, we're going to find some creative way around that, you know, whether it's uh, interviewing people through Zoom or through online surveys. Um, yeah, and that's probably the biggest challenge at the moment. Yeah, I, it's a lot harder to follow visitors in virtual realms. Um, that's, I think that's a good spot for us to kind of springboard. Um, maybe because we are here on Mod TV, Maybe we could start by delving into uh, the work that you have been doing with MOD um, and how that work came about um, and where you see it going from here. Sure. Well, a few years ago, I decided that I, I wanted to do a PhD uh, in uh, something along the lines of how um, 
my, my background's in, in the arts industry. I've got a long history in arts management. I lecture in arts management at the university. But what I've always found about the arts is that there's a lot of power in the arts to actually change people's opinions, change their viewpoints. But it, it can change communities. It can change societies. The artistic experience can can really change a lot of things and there's a lot of kind of untapped power, I think, in the transformative power of the arts. Um, and I saw that throughout my professional life. You know, I worked for uh, uh, youth arts organisations in Northern Ireland, which is a very troubled troubled part of the, the world, particularly when I was working there. Uh, I've worked with Indigenous communities on arts projects. I've worked in arts and health where I've seen how the arts, engagement with arts activities can improve health comes and this sort of thing. Now, everybody, a lot of people know this and there's a lot of research that says, okay, there are a lot of health benefits from engagement with the arts. But a lot of it's more anecdotal. I wanted to zoom in on exactly what it is that makes the arts so powerful and I really wanted to explore that into quite some depth. And that's what led me into examining the uh, transformative power of the arts. And so when I went into... Uh, do a PhD, uh, the, the university said, hang on, you haven't done any research before. We'd like you to do a, a master's by uh, research to start with. And I said, well, okay, I'll do that. That's all right. I've, I've already had a master's degree before then. And um, what we, we, we started throwing around ideas, myself and my supervisors at UniSA, about what we might study. And we decided that innovation is an important aspect of the arts because um, innovation can be driven by the arts, but not, not many people know how. And we wanted to look at festivals and innovation. And so this is literally how it happened. I Googled festivals in innovation and everywhere on Google was Burning Man, Burning Man, Burning Man, Burning Man. And I didn't know much about the Burning Man uh, event, uh, but apparently it was the, uh, the event that, uh, an event that people go to and they, um, for some reason, they they find themselves more innovative afterwards. And I thought this was really weird, you know, well, what's going on here? People go to this festival-like thing and uh, come out being more innovative and relate to how it improved them at work. And uh, I really wanted to explore that. So what I did was um, I read a whole stack of uh, research, literature, and uh, read everything I could about Burning Man and... I should say now, Burning Man, Burners, that's the name of a, that's what people who go to Burning Man are called, Burners. They don't like Burning Man being called a festival. They see it more as like a cultural movement, something along those lines. Uh, but for lack of a better word, uh, it's, it's often called a, a festival. And so what I did was I started innovate, uh, interviewing a whole stack of innovators who work in, you know, like a tech development, product development, and tried to find out what it was about Burning Man and their Burning Man experience that, that make people say that it helps them with their innovation. And largely what I found out was that through going to Burning Man, which is this big crazy festival uh, which has these principles of things like um, self um, radical self-expression and, um, you know, cooperation and working together, no spectators, these sorts of principles, um, the experience of going to this event really helped people to start to think outside of the box and the like. But it also, people also experienced profound personal change through their in involvement with this event. And that profound personal change was, I later found out through reviewing the literature, kind of textbook examples of transformative learning. And so what I found was that people would go to Burning Man, they would experience transformative learning, they would go back to their workplaces and this transformed thinking would help them to be more innovative, would give them uh, more self-confidence, uh, help them to, um, with their creativity, it, often some of the sorts of changes they experienced were that they became more community-minded and they became more environmentally-minded. So through this whole process, I got pretty knowledgeable about uh, engagement with the arts and how that drives personal transformation. And then the opportunity came up at UniSA because there was a research project going where, um, where I, I believe that some of the management there at MOD 
uh, Kristen and uh, some other people involved at, at, the, at the higher levels wanted to find out about how people experience transformative learning through visiting MOD. And so they put out some feelers and I think a bit of a call to researchers who might be interested in, in uh, investigating this aspect of MOD. And uh, I put my hand up, and I think largely because of my experience with researching transformative learning through festivals, namely uh, Burning Man, um, you know, there was a good flow-on effect from researching transformative learning at Burning Man to researching transformative learning experiences through mod visits. Excellent. That's a, a wonderful answer, I think. And, and, and a little description of um, Burning Man there as well. Um, and I guess uh, maybe to stay on Burning Man, but to draw some comparison with mod at the moment, um, a little birdie told me, and I, I think it's public now, that uh, Burning Man is planning to go online this year. Um, and as as many people know, sort of Burning Man is, a, it seems like, very tactile, all-encompassing kind of transformative festival uh, or event. Um, and how do you think um, that step onto being uh, on an online platform or being online uh, will, will work? And, and how will those those transformative um, moments still be able to to uh, to happen uh, in the online field. You know, they're doing something similar to what MOD's doing. We've kind of moved a lot of stuff to online as well. So, yeah, I'm wondering how we can keep up and still have those transformative experiences. I mean, the interesting thing about Burning Man is it's not curated by the organisers. So it's very much up to the community to uh, create their own experiences and build build whatever happens it's going to be community driven rather than you know from a central point and it's an amazing community of incredibly talented people in a diverse array of ways they are talented a lot of technical knowledge a lot of incredibly creative people who can come together as a community to think and plan and map things out and innovate so I think no matter what they do that it's going to be mind-blowing I mean that's my prediction anyway I think it's going to surpass what we expect. I mean, we all know the limits of, you know, looking at screens and the limits of how good that can be. But I think that um, certainly Burning Man Online in whatever form it's going to take is probably going to push those limits into directions that we uh, don't really expect. And, uh, yeah, I look forward to seeing what goes on. And, um, yeah, me too. And and how do you think uh, your work will now transform um, w your work within MOD um, about uh, trying to, yeah, capture those those transformative moments that people might be having engaging with MOD online at the moment? Well, I mean, I think uh, we'll, these things quite often, they, they unravel themselves slowly. So uh, we'll, we'll look and see what, what happens with MOD online. It's, it's a newly developing. You're doing a, a fantastic job and everyone knows it. And, um, you know, I, I think... People, certain experiences will become apparent and certain ways that people learn and interact and engage with what you're doing online. And uh, that, that'll, that'll emerge and, and um, probably researchers like myself might be keen to talk to, to people, like people who are watching this and people who have been to MOD and find out about their experiences and, uh, um, you know, that's something that we can research for sure. It'll be interesting to see what happens, but for sure it's going to be transformative. It's good, good to know. Um, and what to, to bring it back to today's theme a bit, uh, what, what do you think people should be focusing on for better well-being in this environment that we're in? Well, look, I'm all about the arts and the transformative power of the arts. The arts has incredible health benefits. If you get on Google Scholar or the UniSA Library or uni University Library and you just simply type in health outcomes, the arts, and you'll see it just a thousands of papers we all know about the benefits of, of the arts and like you know it, it's often quoted how, how you know music lessons for example really help school children with their grades this sort of thing uh dance lessons uh, or engagement with dance activities can help people with uh mental health, health issues to cope better with their uh, you know their, their challenges um so i think when we're talking about health I think now is a really good time to try to engage with arts activities. And I know for quite a few people that means picking up the guitar that they started to learn five years ago but have left behind. Other people, I saw someone on Twitter the other day, they were uh, they, they found themselves sketching for the first time in like 20 years 
and finding really uh, good health benefits out of that. And also, the arts is a really good porthole to putting ourselves into situations where maybe we're a little bit uncomfortable and uh, um, maybe we're not sure how to behave. But actually, according to the transformative learning literature, that's a really good way to start learning. Often, learning journeys start at that point where we uh, feel uncomfortable with things and we're not sure how to progress. So, you know, may maybe try to indulge yourself in some art forms or arts experiences that you're not familiar with. And we're finding there's an incredible amount of uh, arts activities that people can engage with online. And and perhaps on that, I mean, that's a, a great a great answer and a lot of ideas, but we are getting one comment through that just says that uh, this person says they're getting digital burnout. Uh, they don't think they'll be having many transformative experiences until they can get back to face-to-face. -face. Um, is there a way that the arts could uh, could be a way to, to find a balance with that? Well, I mean, I think so. I think in South Australia where we're seeing some restrictions lifted, we might be finding some – we might have to find some creative ways whereby we can – engage in arts activities as a community in real life, not online performances, but where we have to maintain the social distancing laws. So, for example, I think I saw an article the other day about a city in Lithuania which is shutting down streets and opening up uh, open-air cafes, you know, outdoors, but just with big tables so everyone can enjoy their their, their meal or their drink or whatever, but they're, they're um, you know, 1.5 metres away. Another example is I saw uh, a gig where there was a rock band and everyone drove into a drive-in movie theatre, parked their cars, and so they are all keeping a good distance away and the band was on a big stage and keeping 1.5 metres or whatever it is away from the other people. So I think we're going to find some really creative ways to get back into that flesh and blood, you know, the the face-to-face uh, -face experience of the arts, which we all love so much. So, yeah, absolutely, digital burnout can be one thing but hopefully we're going to find more creative ways to keep safe and uh, still experience the arts in the flesh. So it, it's obvious that the, the situation we're in is changing the ways in which we are accessing transformative um, experiences. And, and do you think also that perhaps on a bigger scale, this is a transformative experience that we are going to, and it's not just about changing the way we access these things now and then returning back to the way we access things before, but do you think there's going to be a big legacy in the way, you know, I'll, sorry, the question I'm trying to get is, are we going through a transformative experience right now? That's a really great question. And uh, I think that potentially we, we are going through as a whole society, as a whole world, because we're all in this together, we're all in the same situation, uh, more or less. Um, but I think it is definitely a really huge opportunity for transformative learning as a society. So if you look at the, the I mean, the, the most kind of foundational uh, research study or research papers and writing comes from a guy called Jack Mesereau who defined that there's 10 phases of transformative learning. And the very first phase is what he calls a disorienting dilemma where you feel lost and confused. And, and we've all felt that. Maybe we're getting more at home with this new situation. The second phase, is a self-examination with feelings of guilt and shame where we start looking internally and we start to feel discomfort and then there's an, a critical assessment. And we're all going through this as, a, as, a, um, uh, as individuals, but we're also going through it as society. Then we start exploring new options and we plan a course of action. We try to uh, acquire new knowledge and then we kind of build confidence and self-confidence uh, in new roles and before for reintegrating positive change into our lives and hopefully as a community into the way we live. So I think there's a there's an awesome opportunity for us all as, as a community to, to really grow from this experience. And uh, I, I hope it takes place. I, I think it will have fundamental kind of uh, optimism and faith in the human race. I don't have much faith in our politicians, but as, a, as humans, I, I think uh, I have a lot of faith and uh, hope that we can experience that all together. Yes. Well, it's a uh, it's an interesting thing to think about um, just how difficult 
it can be and how these things are changing. Um, we've probably already touched on, on this kind of idea, but um, do you have any thoughts on how we create um, transformative uh, experiences through the arts, through these digital spaces? Look, I think probably what's going to have to happen or what will happen is that people will come together as communities. And I've seen this a little bit online where um, uh, people are working together and finding the most creative ways to make really good online experiences. And people are, are, are learning through the experience of creating the art. So it's not just about the outcome. It's not just about, okay, I'm going to go online now and experience this, this piece of art. It's going to be, okay, I'm, join, I'm going to join in with this group of people and we're going to make, make a uh, piece of art. And I'm seeing that happen and I think people will get more engaged with the creative process and I think that's probably where the uh, opportunity for, for, you know, transformative learning um, will probably occur, more in, the, more in the making of the art than simply uh, looking at no spectators, as the burners would say. <laughs> That's great. And if, if people are interested in uh, to find out more about transformative learning uh, in general, where would you suggest that they go searching for that? Well, I mean, you can start with the, the um, well, I mean, you'd be surprised. There's a lot of places where you can learn about transformative learning. So there's a lot of travel movies about transformative learning and travel. So if, if you think of movies like, um, I don't know, you guys could probably help me think of movies which are all about where people go to travel and they experience this profound personal cha change. Um, I'm thinking of one which I watched recently where the lady walked, hiked the uh, a trail along the, the west coast. Uh, the Camino? Was that the Camino yeah. one? I think there's no, one. No, it was, it, was, it was in the North America. I'm drawing ah. blanks on these movies. And we're um, getting Eat, Eat, Pray, Love is one of the Eat, Pray, Love, as well. great example. Classic. Uh, um, the the Geeling Express Limited. Uh, the best Marigold Hotel. Or I'm I'm terrible with remembering movie names. Fear and Loathing in Las Vegas. I don't know if that's quite. Uh, uh, maybe. <laughs> yeah, could could be. I guess so. I haven't watched that one for a while. Um, Wild. That's the movie I'm thinking of. Uh, and in my studies, actually, they use this book Wild, which is about a, a lady who transformed her life through hiking a famous North American trail. And now they they use this book as a basis to it, for reading groups within women's prisons to to help develop you know transformative learning uh through through this book um yeah so there's some examples of films so there's there's good examples in, in films obviously there's lots of books a lot of personal development books are about transformative learning if you want to look at the academic literature Mesero's the the foundational guy if you want to keep up with what i'm writing about it there's a there's i think some links are going to be posted you can check out my blog at wherewordsfailblog.com also, my I put everything I write goes on Twitter, and uh, I have a Facebook group called uh, Culture for Business, Governments, and Life. So, you know, look look me up online and connect with me, and I'll, I'll share with you everything that I write about transformative learning and the arts and tourism and this type of thing. Wonderful. Well, in the time that we've got left, we would love to learn what is next for you, Grant. Um, you know, it can be hard to predict what's next for any of us, but um, where do you see uh, this work going, both with MOD and um, your work beyond uh, what you're doing with us? Well, I mean, I've, I've found that I think that my work is probably more important now than when I started because I think we are as a society and as individuals, you know, we need to transform because, you know, obviously things aren't sustainable as the, the way we're, we're heading. Um, so, so I think... Uh, it's the right time for me to, to be doing this this research and sharing more with my, you know, what I find and what I learn. And um, so for me, the next stage is I, I'm teaching now until uh, I'm a full-time academic until August, and then I'm going to go back and do a PhD, which will be along similar topics about the transformational power of the arts. Um, I'm going to finish off this project with MOD, and uh, I think that's going to be a real springboard into other learning coupled with the, the research about Burning Man. And then I, I don't have any real specific ideas about what I want to do with my PhD, um, but, uh, you know, just reading a lot of literature and trying to find inspiration about exactly what I want to narrow uh, my research down into. Um, potentially, there's this field, there's this way you can study uh, and conduct research, which is called autobiography. Uh, let me get this up right. Autoethnographical 
research where it's based on your own experiences. I'm thinking of just maybe throwing myself into a whole stack of transformative learning experiences and then reflecting on that and see how that goes. That might be a really fun way to do it. Not sure my supervisors will like that approach, but that's what I'm toying with now, having wicked adventures and then, uh, you know, basing my research on that. Do any past transformational experiences spring to mind for you personally? Oh, sure. I mean, a lot of my transformational experiences and things that, that I've, uh, the way I've grown as a, as a person have come through the arts and also through travel. So travel is a great way of experiencing transformative learning, seeing how other people live, perhaps living with communities other than your own. Um, I was lucky enough, I spent about 15 years on the road, living in quite a few different places. Um, and, you know, from every country where I, where I lived, there was, um, you know, transformative learning for me. Um, I purposely lived in places like Northern Ireland that, were post-conflict environments or divided communities because uh, I was very interested in that aspect of where you have groups of people that, for whatever reason, really can't stand each other and then the power of the arts to bring healing and bring people together within divided communities. So, um, yeah, living in, in those places uh, really helped me um, to formulate my opinions and um, my interest in the transformative value and power of the arts. Well, wonderful. It has been really special having this chat with you uh, this afternoon. Grant, we would like to thank you for taking the time to come into our virtual chat room um, and share your thoughts and ideas. Really enjoyed it. Thanks. That was great, Jacob. Uh, we were just um, hearing about how we may be able to have a step back uh, into some kind of um, live experience uh, through the arts, some kind of face-to-face -face through the arts. And at the moment, I think the limit in South Australia is 10 people in a room, provided uh, the right distancing inside. And um, But I think like we could uh, give away a little bit that we're both uh, work in a, as performers as well. And I think that be, there's been times when I've only had sort of 10 people at a gig and that's been fine. So maybe we just go back to that. I'm not sure. Yeah, you know, for some of us, it'll just be like a regular Friday night, won't it? <laughs> just playing for a meal, you know? <laughs> and That's four. right. I'm not sure if it was uh, quite as transformative as some of the other uh, examples that we heard there. No, absolutely. Though some of my uh, absolute favourite experiences of art has been in really intimate um, settings and environments. Um, whether that was purposeful or not is kind of irrelevant. Um, I think that's a really amazing thing about artistic experience is it is communal and it's also personal. Um, you don't necessarily require, some artistic experiences require to share it with lots of people, but I think also there's such a power in the arts that you can have a very personal, intimate relationship um, with, with a piece of art. Yeah, that's right. And a lot of times you might be experiencing the art in a environment where you, you are just solitary, sometimes visual art or even at a concert or at, a, at another event where you feel kind of on your own, maybe at a cinema even where if you're just there on your own, you might not feel too connected to the group. So, yeah, a lot of the experience of art can be individual, and but I think it still has that power for transformation. It was interesting hearing about the data and, and the research that goes into that. Mm, absolutely. Sam, before we go, do you have a – what, what – Art, artistic experiences have transformed you. Oh, oh. Uh, well, you did remind me talking about small, like like kind of one-on-one -on -one experiences or small audiences. Um, there have been a few uh, kind of short theatrical experiences that I've um, been to at festivals where, yeah, it was just sort of one-on-one -on -one or you were taken through a space by one person at a time and um, and yeah, that, that felt, they feel very transformative often with like sometimes blindfolded or, um, or, you know, taking away a sense and, and you still having to interact with the space around you, but missing a sense. Um, yeah, that they, I found them very transformative. Mm -hmm. What about Amazing. yourself? <laughs> well, the thing that occurred to me, um, when we asked Grant this question was, was travel. I think, um, travel has been, uh, quite a transformative thing that I've done. And I think especially experiences where you are completely removed from your normal 
uh, way of doing things. So maybe traveling off grid, you know, traveling without the safety of a phone or in places where there are no phone connections. I found those things especially transformative because on an immediate level, you know, your environment is transformed and you don't have any of the normal um, structures that you have in your day-to-day life. Yeah, travel is a big one. And, uh, you know, we're very lucky whoever can get have uh, access to that travel, but it is definitely, um, yeah, transformative. I agree. Uh, we could keep talking all day, and I'm sure we will <laughs> offline, and uh, and so can you at home. Uh, but we'll be back tomorrow at 4 p.m. with another edition of Mod TV featuring Emily Hilda. In the meantime, if you'd like to see more about what's happening at Mod, head to our website, mod.org.au, or our Facebook and Instagram. Uh, Big thanks to Grant Hall. And behind the scenes today, we had Hen, Becky, Kat, Claudia, and Samuel. And it's great hanging out with you again, Jacob. And thanks for tuning in. See ya. Thank you, everyone. Goodbye.